Welcome to episode 16 of this Brockway Skiff build. Uh, my name is Dennis and this is yours truly standing next to the boat we're building. After uploading episode 15, my dad decided to visit and check this boat out in person. Uh, my dad is an inspiration to me. He's a master carpenter and certified aircraft mechanic. Uh, my strong work ethic comes from watching this man work. And don't let that smile fool you. My dad has worn out more wheelbarrows than I can count on all my fingers and toes. Um, do you remember, I'm thinking of a story to share with you. Do you remember the movie The Perfect Storm with... Uh, I think George Clooney and Mark Wahlberg played in it. Anyway, uh, my dad, my brother, and I, when I was just a kid, uh, we actually lived through something very similar in our boat uh, called Free to Be. Uh, we were northwest of Ketchikan, Alaska, between Grindle Island and Guard Island that has a lighthouse on it. We were mid-channel in Clarence Strait when the weather literally instantly changed. Within 20 minutes we went from calm seas to 30 foot swells with breaking waves. It was a real mess. Free to be is a 25 foot boat. The breaking waves were many times over what would be needed to capsize us if we were hit on the beam. I slipped off the ladder coming off the flying bridge and nearly went overboard. Dad had no choice but to run the troughs between the waves and seek protection. Thankfully, Dad had gone through the engine and had it in great running order. It, if it had shuddered or stuttered and failed to respond even one time as he turned out of the trough to meet the next oncoming wave, I'm certain we would have pitch pulled. Uh, similar to what's about to happen here in this image from the movie, of the perfect storm. Along with God Almighty, I also like to have this sailor, my dad, at the helm when the weather turns unbearable. And he's fun when it's bearable too, but uh, thank you Lord and thank you Dad. Glad to be here, glad to be building a boat. <laughs> I was waiting on some CPEZ to arrive. CPEZ stands for Clear Penetrating Epoxy Sealer. So I decided to spend some time uh, figuring out where to put our bow eye. Now this is something you want to think about and each boat is unique. And although the bow eye is often used to just pull the boat onto its trailer using the hand crank, its primary purpose in my opinion is to facilitate towing of the boat by another vessel, especially when your boat is a small boat like this. The entire mass of the boat can be considered to act at a single point. We call that point the center of gravity. Imagine the center of gravity for the boat was at this location here. If we towed the boat through the water, using the Samson post up here, pulling it like that, the line of action would be something like this, and that is acting quite a distance above our center of gravity. This pulling action way up here would cause the bow of the boat to dig down into the water and it'll eventually veer off to one side or the other. Or worse, it can submarine and go completely under the water and possibly turn and go turtle or capsize. So to tow the boat properly, we desire a bow eye to be in line with the center of gravity like this. So I will use our quarter scale model, which is shown here, to estimate the center of gravity for the boat. How can we do this? Imagine you have some odd shaped object. Uh, you could simply put a fulcrum under it and find out where it balances, like that. 
This tells us the center of gravity, if it's balancing on that point right there, must act on a plane right where that dashed line is. So we know the center of gravity is somewhere on that red line. Next, we could stand the object on end and do the fulcrum trick again. Then, we would know the center of gravity is where those two lines cross. However, what if the end of the object is sloped, like in the case of our boat, and the fulcrum trick is impractical to do when it's on its end? What can we do instead? If we hang the object by a line attached to any corner, gravity will cause the center of gravity to line up directly under the line or point we're hanging the boat from. Just like before, the center of gravity will be where the two lines cross. Let's now apply these uh, techniques to our little boat model. Here is the model resting on the keel of our boat. Because our boat has lots of rocker, remember rocker is this curve here, we don't need a fulcrum. The fulcrum point is just where the bottom of the model is actually touching the, the keel in this case, or the ground. And it's right about there. Next, I do this. I simply hung the model by a point, and a convenient point was the hole through this Samson post here. And then you can add a plumb line next to the boat. You could use a string with a weight at the end, or just plumb up a level like I did here. I then measured from our plumb line, or the level in this case, over to our string line, and it was about eight and a half inches. I then measured from our plumb line, or the level, over to the bottom of the keel. And the point you want to measure to is where that fulcrum point is. And it was about five inches. So subtracting the 5 inches from the 8.5 inches before, I now know the center of gravity of the model is about 3.5 inches above the bottom of the keel. Pretty simple. So I set my square up and clamped a strip of wood to it here. And this strip of wood, the top of it, is 3.5 inches up on the square from the ground plane and I made sure the wood was perpendicular to the long edge of the square using another little square. I then slid the whole thing over until this top edge of the wood touched our boat. This is the point where the bow eye should be installed because a straight line through this will run right through the center of gravity. So if we pull on an eye located right here, that line of action will run through the center of gravity. I marked the point on our boat model with a sharpie. You can see it right here. Then I measured the distance from the shear of the bow to that point. In this case, it was about seven inches. Now, since our boat model is a quarter scale model, this implies the point, the same point on the full size boat would be four times this distance, four times seven, or 28 inches. Here I am pulling the 28 inches on the real boat, the full size boat. And I marked it where my finger is pointing. Here is the point right here. And that's 28 inches from here, about 12 inches down 
from the bottom of the boat along the stem here. <clears throat> I then drilled a 3 8 inch diameter hole to install the bow eye. Uh, the bow eye has not arrived yet. I've ordered it. So we're just drilling the hole for now. I checked inside the boat to confirm the hole was centered from side to side through the stem and that looks pretty good. About equal distance from the hole to the, the edge of the stem. I then made a bit of a flat area here for the bow eye to mount. There's a side profile of the notch. Next I decided to work on drilling, locating and drilling the drain hole through the transom. On the model I put the drain hole right there where the laser pointer is. You can see this piece of scotch tape I put over it for doing uh, those shots where you see it floating in the lake. So I climbed up under the boat and surveyed the area. I wanted the drain as close to the floor. Remember the boat is upside down so this is our floor our bottom panel here. I wanted the edge of this drain hole as close to that bottom panel as possible. Here I am drilling it with a 1 and 1 8 inch diameter spade bit. Here is where it came out through the back of the transom. Good enough for me. The CPEZ, the clear penetrating epoxy sealer, finally arrived, so it was time to coat the boat. You can just roll on the same epoxy we use to assemble the boat. Uh, it takes about three coats to waterproof the wood. Uh, the final coat or two will tend to build up on the surface and may need to be sanded. So to minimize sanding you can add 10% denatured alcohol to the straight epoxy. I'm talking about the same epoxy we use to assemble this boat. You can thin it out with the alcohol so it rolls on smoother. However, for this boat build, I've decided to use this CPEZ. This is Smith's formula, and it soaks deep, deep into the wood surface. And it will not, a force, it will not force you to do as much sanding as you might have to do when you use the straight epoxy, even when you thin out the straight epoxy with alcohol. It still builds up on the surface and sometimes that can get a little lumpy and you might have to sand it. So this stuff here, it's, it's expensive, but it's a real plus not to sand, in my opinion, or to know you won't have to sand. Now this stuff has a lot of nasty volatiles in it, so open the doors, turn on a fan, wear a respirator, and work quickly. Uh, I used a standard paintbrush and 4 inch foam roller. In the background you can see I have partially rolled on the first coat over the keel so she's dry here and I've coated from here back to the transom. Here is a pic after the first coat was applied. Uh, notice how there's not much shine to this keel. Uh, the surface is completely soaked in all the CPEZ. This, in, this indicates the entire first coat is soaked in below the surface. None of it is sitting on top of the surface. At least none you can see with your eye. Here is the keel after two coats of CPEZ. You're starting to see shine on the harder grain area and in the softer wood like here it's still soaking in. Here is a pick just after the third coat was applied over the whole bottom and the sides. Uh, I applied one coat each day. 
and it's cold out but I'm using Smith's cold weather formula he has a cold weather formula and a warm weather formula I noticed after the third coat the next day that all the surfaces were shiny and the wood had soaked in all it could once this happens you're done with the CPEZ. You don't need to put on any more. It's just a waste of money to put on more than that. So I would say three coats with a roller should get you there. Here I am masking off the bottom of the boat for some high build primer. Please note I am only using this high build primer to fill in sanding scratches and any portion of the weave of the fiberglass that did not get completely filled with the green fairing compound we used previously. I'm applying the primer purely for cosmetic reasons. The primer is not meant to promote paint adhesion. Uh, provided you paint the next day, uh, the CPEZ resin will make an awesome, awesome bond to your paint. So it's totally okay to skip the primer. Here's the primer I used. I usually use this stuff, not usually, in the past I have always applied this stuff from an aerosol spray can, but decided to order cans of it like this so I could roll it on. Unfortunately, I didn't do enough homework and found out that when it comes in the can like this it's designed only to be sprayed it's not meant to roll on and it doesn't roll on very well out of the can uh, I found it difficult to do using a roller so in the future I will just stick to using the aerosol cans this is after the first coat the stuff in the can is so thin, it's so thinned out for spraying that I was not getting good coverage with a roller. You can see a lot of the wood through the primer here. Uh, on top of that, my foam roller started to melt. These Sureline rollers here is what I was using and apparently they're not compatible with the acetone that's in the primer. So I switched to these high density foam rollers and they held up just fine. Later I switched again to these rollers and I got these at Home Depot and got a decent coverage with these. So you know a good paint job comes from a systematic process that you have developed. Uh, it takes time to develop that process and sometimes even the slightest change to the process in this case using the same primer but out of a can instead of an aerosol uh, caused me some frustration so the life lesson here is this not all ideas will be good ones <laughs> remember that one so here's the primer job after three coats not even close to perfect but we've got a good enough build on there and it's good enough to to sand out flat I wanted to fill some of the dings and pits I noticed after priming you always start to notice defects once you lay the primer down another reason for priming however I read that our green epoxy fairing compound that I was using previously should not be used over one part paints so I decided to use a standard lightweight polyester based auto body filler which you can see here I think I picked this up at O'Reilly's here you can see some of the various areas that I filled dings, knot holes, pits, scratches uh, whatever there was an edge that had a chunk missing out of it so filled that in I let the filler cure and then sanded it smooth 
I then wrap the side of the boat to protect it and in preparation for sanding the primer down smooth we're gonna wet sand so that makes a bit of a slurry on there that can dribble off the the bottom of the boat and land on the sides I used 400 grit wet dry sandpaper shown here a spray bottle of water and this little 3M sanding sponge as you sand you spray your sandpaper with uh, with the water and you also spray the surface you're sanding with the water and that acts as a lubricant it also keeps the sandpaper from clogging up and it goes pretty fast I did the whole bottom of the bow in less than 20 minutes and I used two of these strips out of this package that's it I used this squeegee to quickly remove the sanding slurry off the boat that's why I protected the sides with the plastic sheeting here's the primer after the wet sanding operation things started out a bit rough with the primer process but I think it eventually came out great next it was time to roll on some paint I'm using this affordable rust-oleum product I have used all kinds of paints in the past urethane LPU one part two part etc etc the paint industry is literally overwhelmed with products most of the products are designed for shops that need the paint to cure in hours so they can kick kick it out the door to the customer or it's designed for boats that need to launch on the next tide um, if you have time for it to cure a good old-fashioned oil-based paint I think is just fine it's affordable it's widely available and it doesn't require a spacesuit and an oxygen tank to apply I don't think this paint has any UV inhibitors in it so it will fade in the sunlight over time I usually roll on a refresher coat every other year anyway so not a deal breaker for me here it is after rolling on the first coat you can see I was almost but not quite getting full coverage you can see a holiday here and a little bit of holidays through here and a little bit on the side there but looking pretty good pretty good coverage for a first coat here it is after the second coat and it was really laying down nice and smooth okay that is good enough for me and that is it for this episode so thank you for watching, and if you've been following this build in real time, I just want to wish you a very Merry Christmas, and God bless. And we will see you next time in the new year. Goodbye.